So let's make a start. We have, of course, some music as we begin to gather. Feel free to sing along in the background if you can. Here we go. So we gather together to worship God and we gather together with the word of God before us, the word of God made flesh in the coming of Christ and the candle, the symbol of Christ, the light of the world. 
And if you've got your candle and your Bible that you're able to light, please do so now. You may see mine's in my back corner over there. Uh, I remembered to light it this week. So we come together as God's people as we share and worship God. And as we do that, we recognise that we come from various places, particularly on a morning like this where we can't gather in our community home, but we gather where we are able. And so as we gather, we acknowledge that this land is God's land and that God's spirit dwells here. We acknowledge the Wurundjeri people, traditional custodians of this land under God, and we continue to commit ourselves to working for reconciliation in this land. So welcome, as I said, welcome to worship this morning as we gather to share. We're kind of in our official last bit of this little series um, with the title, Where Do We Go From Here? We've heard some amazing stuff. We don't have any guests this morning. Kelly and I are going to be reflecting a little bit about what we've been hearing and what we've um, where, where some possibilities could be. Next week, we're going to do a little bit more on this. So we're kind of finishing, but we're just going to expand it just a fraction wider next week. Um, and we'll, you'll hear more about that as we go on. But today, our stories look um, from Ruth and from Acts. And one of, you know, Ruth, I love as a story. Um, and our Acts reading has some words in it are going to really stretch us, I think. So as we would normally do, uh, let's share that peace with each of us. So let me say to you, the peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And also with you. So take a moment, share that with those who may be in the room with you. Send a text or a message for those that you are thinking of. Um, and at, we share that peace as we gather in our different places. I'll give you a moment to do that. Yes. So let's start with our call to worship. If you come into this place with the hope of growing deeper, with the hope of connecting, with the hope of glimpsing God, and if all of these things take place and your spirit is moved and you swear God is near, and you feel more than lucky for the gift of faith. And then the service comes to an end and it's time for you to leave. And you ask yourself, where do we go from here? Then I would say to you, go out into the world to love and to share and to learn, but come back soon because this is the beginning. This is only the beginning. So come on in. Fill your cup here. Be present here. God is here. Let us worship holy God. And let's do that as we sing together this hour.
grace that sets us free releases us to be your people in the world. People in the world. Wake us from our sleep and fill our mouths with praise forever. Lift us to our feet to serve you all our days together. Holy Spirit, come to us this hour. Fill us with the wonder of your power. Power to inspire, to set our hearts on fire, to live our lives for you. Live our lives for you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. As I said, we have no gifts, guests, guests with us today. <laughs> But we have been unbelievably blessed um, by hearing some of the stories from, from some of our people. It's been wonderful to see their faces, uh, which is something we're missing. Uh, it's been wonderful to hear their comments. Um, and it's been amazing that some of them have been so, so different and yet so, so similar. Um, and so Cal and I are just going to share a little bit or reflect a little bit on what we believe we've heard over the last three weeks. And we're going to take each of our, um, our questions. Um, so if we make a start with the first one, which is where do you come from or where are you from? Um, Cal, what were your thoughts <laughs> on, on this one? I'll go with you first. <laughs> The what beauty of what did I think of myself and others talking? <laughs> uh, what did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, what did I hear? I heard that there are many things that make up a person, not just our heritage, but also not just the culture we live in. Um, and there are many things that we actually don't know of each other. And I think that was my biggest takeaway. Um, I know for myself, even listening to Josh and Erin, I know them both quite well. And those stories that they shared aren't new to my ears, but I heard them in a different way. Um, and for me that, yeah, it made me realise that I heard that we all need to hear more clearly yep. so, and listen. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was for me, the big takeaway that um, that question, where do you come from, uh, is not geographical, not mm. just geographical. Yeah. Um, that there is so much that we bring into all that we live. Um, mm. And to hear a little bit about it, um, you know, I, I pick up on the Erin's comment about having a, a family member that's been adopted. Um, and that whole question mark, it brings into where do we come from? Who do we are? Absolutely. So who, who are we? Mm. Um, so that's a really important one. Okay, yeah. our next question was, where does it hurt? And Oof. boy, did we get some sharing on that. Um, yep. Yeah, you might have seen on screen that I cried because you weren't the only one, me. don't worry. <laughs> um, I think what I heard is that we either, it's funny, I think it's the same thing for this week and what do we need, um, that we either all need to do some more listening to each other um, and be present and ready to hear each other. Um, but also we need to be present and ready to hear ourselves. And what is our body saying? What are the emotions that we're saying? Um, and if it means finding someone to reflect that with, um, that would be amazing. Uh, but also that means for the rest of us, we need to offer ourselves as people to reflect with. Um, so it's a bit of true space there. Yep. Mm. I think... Um... The other thing that came out for me in that week was, um, again, the comments that came through the Facebook chat um, was the connection that people felt, hey, I'm not doing this alone. Yes. To be able yeah. to hear some of those feelings, to hear some of those hurts and understand I'm not the only one feeling that way. 
And I think that's been one of our challenges with this lockdown, the fact that we can't get out and share. We can't get out and listen. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. they're, they're really important. Um, some of us are really aware of what we're feeling very deep inside of ourselves. Some of us aren't. And that's okay because we're all in different spaces. Um, maybe some of the challenge is to listen a little deeper. Um, yeah. Maybe that one. And our last, our last one, uh, what do you need? Yeah, what do we need? Um, I loved this question because it's very specific. Like each of us can answer that in really practical ways or really emotional ways. Um, but the two things that really stood out for me that week was one, this space where like resilience and what resilience is for each of us has completely shifted in COVID. And what do we need? We might struggle to answer the actual question a little bit because we don't know what our bounce back method is yet. Um, and then the other thing that really stood out to me was those who can sit with that little level of peace, whether it's peace 24 seven or momentary little bits. Um, they had a real connection with Christ being a space that offers that, that need, that fulfillment. So those are the two biggest takeaways that I got. Just mm -hmm. as you talk, Kel, the, the word Christ in there, and I think we heard that in each of the three weeks yeah. as well, is how important that grounding of our faith and that mm. fitting and being encompassed by. Our Absolutely. Um, not only does it help define where we come from, um, it, it um, comforts us through the hurt yep. and then supplies us in the need. Yes, um, definitely. Definitely, so was, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's, it's been amazing what we've heard. I think... The word here is a really important word in all that we've done. Yeah. Um, we don't get the opportunity or we, we don't allow the opportunity to have these conversations normally. Yeah. And perhaps that's something we need to be more aware of. Um, we need to listen. And I think one of the challenges of listening is also to hear how we ourselves respond to that listening absolutely um, that's absolutely. one of the one of the courses that i did not that it needs to be a course but um it was called what is it let the heart listen i love that subject <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and it is we you sit and listen but you also listen to yourself and i think um we've all had some reaction some response to the things that we've been hearing mm -hmm. um and I think that's really important. And so where do we go from here? For me, says a few things. Yeah. And I think the big one is listening. We need to listen. We need to be aware that we are all coming from different places at different times and in different ways. Um, and as we do that, not only do we get to know each other better, but we actually get to know ourselves a little better as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so that I think is is where we're sitting at. And the beautiful thing we've had with this series is that not only have we had the opportunity to hear from our people, we've also had the opportunity to hear from God as by using our scriptures and the stories and the examples and the and the opportunities that that comes. Yeah. Um, so don't stop talking, people. Even though we're at a distance at the moment, there is that little thing called a telephone or for those who would rather send a text because we don't want to interrupt or send an email, we all respond differently. Um, but we need to listen. We need to be aware of our differences and embrace and love and accept and respect all of those differences as well. Definitely. Cool. Thank you, Kel. That was good to share. Hopefully you've all had a bit. And, of course, you can always go back and listen to them all Absolutely. on the YouTube channel or on and Facebook. <laughs> Absolutely. And if there is something that you specifically remember, then feel free to type it into yeah. the chat boxes because I'm sure uh, each of us have heard something. And in, the, in that, you know, the spirit of hearing, like let's take a moment and type away so we can listen more widely and deeply. Yeah.
Absolutely, indeed. Wonderful. All right, so I talked about us hearing from our people and hearing from God, hearing from our scriptures. So it's time to do that. Kel, you and I didn't have this conversation. Are you going to read today or are we going to share this? <laughs> um, I think maybe if I read one and then you can read the other. Okay. Would you rather read Ruth or just because you love Ruth or would you rather that I jump right in? I'll read Ruth. I'll make a mess of all the names, but I'll give that a go. <laughs> I did that last week, so enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me get myself sorted out again. As we go from here and into our readings. So, as I said, we've got Ruth and we've got Acts. We're going to read more of Acts next week, but let's listen to Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion, and they were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other was Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud. They said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying them? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. And then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do this, do thus and so to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? And she said to them, call me no longer Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has dealt harshly with me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? So Naomi returned together with Ruth the Moabite, the daughter-in-law, 
who came back with her from the country of Moab. They came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Our second reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through to 16. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously to the people and prayed constantly to God. One afternoon at about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he clearly saw an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. He stared at him in terror and said, what is it, Lord? He answered, your prayers and your arms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa for a certain Simon who is called Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. When the angel who spoke to him had left, he called two of his slaves and a devout soldier from the ranks of those who served him. And after telling them everything, he sent them to Joppa. About noon the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet came down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again a second time. What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Be to God. God. Thanks, Kel. Let's sing together. We walk on. We're bothered and broken We are a family So fractured and frail Here is a household We're doubtful, divided We are all pilgrims Together alone And so we walk And so we walk We walk on Lord, we walk We are a people, we're holding a promise Once we're full-bodied, yet now we are bones Here was a heartbeat, still heaving and hoping Lifeblood now seeping, as cold as a stone And so we walk, and so we walk We walk on Lord, we walk on We are all travellers with little direction We are all followers with future unknown God of the twilight, God of the morning God who stands by us, our story unfolds And so we walk and so we walk, we walk on, Lord, we walk on. We are all warriors, we're anxious, despairing. We are all dreamers, still longing for home. Spirits are broken, our hearts are wide open. Just for ourselves and just for the world And so we walk, and so we walk We walk on, Lord, we walk on And so we walk, and so we walk 
we walk on, Lord, we walk on. This is our journey, our wilderness people. This is our yearning of healing for all. Behind and before us, within and beside us. Christ in the pathway, Christ in the call. And so we walk, and so we walk. We walk on, oh we walk on. And so we walk, and so we walk. We walk on, Lord, we walk on. Let's um, have a moment where we think about what we have been listening to as we hear. Let me just get myself semi sorted out here and let's reflect on our scripture readings as i said earlier i hope that we have that the opportunity that we've had to ask these questions over the last 3 weeks to listen to some of our stories in response to them and to hear the connections with the scripture stories will not leave us quickly I want to challenge you to keep thinking about these questions, to keep seeking answers and insight that reflect the stories of today and our experiences. Today, our scripture passages tell of people who have met in places where they would not normally, how they have formed and enhanced the relationship between them, and then how they moved forward into better understanding and respect. And you could say that they have moved forward in grace and love. The story of Ruth and Naomi offers an inside look at grief, loss, and God's ability to redefine the meaning of family and community. In grief and loss, it is easy to withdraw and handle heavy burdens alone. And that's what Naomi is doing. But we hear that Ruth will not be part of that. Now, Naomi carries an additional burden, knowing that her daughter-in-laws would have to navigate as single women in their current patriarchal society. One daughter-in-law respects Naomi's wishes and returns to her familial surroundings. The other daughter-in-law, Ruth, does not. Ruth's response echoes the unending and far-reaching love of God. Her response is rooted and grounded in being bound to another. In the face of loss, these family ties are deepened through a spiritual bond of connection, commitment and community. Ruth is willing to live, worship, work, advocate, walk alongside and find her earthly resting place with Naomi from this day forward. Ruth puts the differences that she and Naomi have in culture, age, experience and ethnic background all to one side so that the relationship that they have between them becomes paramount. From this place of acceptance, they move forward together into a new life and ultimately into a new family. Now, I have to admit that although I know and respect the rules that we have in our lives, be they rules of today, rules of the church, rules of expected behaviour, I do tend to, from time to time, look for ways around rules. In this time of restrictions, no matter how frustrating we can find them, we do have some clear do's and don'ts for our daily lives, and they are designed to keep people safe. They are the rules we need to abide by at the moment. 
Now, strict rule followers must always keep one thing in mind, and that is sometimes the rules change. Sometimes the culture and expectation of the day changes as well. Something that was written in stone five, 10 or 50 years ago is no longer written in that stone, but has morphed into something else or has even disappeared completely. As a devout Jew, Peter had been raised to follow spiritual and ritualistic laws passed down from generation to generation. These rules were established to set, aside, set apart the people of God, to create space and rhythm around work, worship and daily living. The rules were woven into the everyday lives of the people. And then came Jesus. Jesus was known to take rules and redefine what it meant to embody those rules. Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Jesus dined with tax collectors and sex workers. Jesus called people to stop hiding in trees, whispered truths to seekers in the middle of the night, and told people to stand up tall, for there was no one to throw stones any longer. Peter was a first-hand witness to Christ's ministry of inclusion and the incarnational ministry of presence. In Acts, we find Peter established as the pioneer of the first church. Peter was a rule follower, not perfect, but passionate about the gospel of Jesus. As a rule follower, I can only imagine Peter's reaction to this vision of a sheet filled with ritualistically unclean foods. And we hear a little of Peter's thought process when he is asked to kill and eat these unclean things. I can only imagine the struggle of digesting the divine message, declaring what God has made clean, you must not call profane. We know that there is a wideness in God's mercy. There is hope for the faithful rule follower. God will draw the circle wider to include everyone to receive God's message of grace, justice and love. God will open our eyes, show us what is in our sheet and give us new ways to proclaim the life-saving world-changing, transformative power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to all. Peter and Cornelius come from very different places and backgrounds, very different understandings and experiences of God. But they put those things that would separate them aside and come together to move forward and begin an important relationship that would affect us here and now. Remember, Cornelius was a Gentile. Peter was a Jew. This is what I believed, believe we are challenged to do, to step over our differences, to respect and acknowledge that although we are not the same, that we are all made in the image of God. It is the relationships we form that help us to reflect the love of God to all around us. We've heard and some of us have even experienced a lot of death, grief and loss in the midst of a global pandemic, of racial brokenness, of economic disparity and political division. Can you imagine a world in which we took spiritual oaths like the one that we heard this morning in the book of Ruth, what if we took these vows with members of our human family? Maybe we need to start with members of our family here and then go wider to others we would not normally interact with. I want you to imagine 
saying this to the people in our church family to begin with. By the mercy of God and because of God's grace, we are bound together to one another. Your pain is not your pain, but is now my pain. The plight of your people is held in my hands and my heart as if it were my own. Where you journey and work, I too will journey and work alongside you with God's help. Where your bones are buried, may I too find a resting place and declare every earthly resting place sacred in the eyes of God. What would it be like if we said that to each other? Somewhere to go from here. Let's sing together now as we head back and sing Christ at the Road. Christ of the Road, tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love, in our lives your life be displayed lead us always on the journey of justice the ways of compassion to learn guide us O god in the pathways of truth seeking your peace every turn christ of the road tears of the broken Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love. In our lives, your life be displayed. Teach us to see you in friend and in stranger, to know you in those who we need. May the love that we've known be the love that we show. To us may you touch those we greet. Christ of the road, of tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love, in our lives your life be displayed. Christ be within, before and behind us, Christ to our left. In the twists of the road as we journey this life, be with us by day and by night. Christ of the road, tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love, in our lives your life be displayed. So the time when we offer our offering um, and a little reflection as we come into that. So the stories of Ruth and Naomi and Peter and Cornelius are the stories of God working through people. Naomi needed Ruth to make it back home and start fresh, just as Peter needed Cornelius to understand God's message. Mary needed Elizabeth. Jesus needed the disciples, and Moses needed Aaron. The story of our faith is one that constantly reminds us that we cannot do this work alone. So in community, we ask ourselves, where do we go from here? And one answer to that question is that we give what we have, what we can from what we have, and trust that God will continue moving us closer to that promised day. And so as we come to this time of offering, family of faith, I invite you to commit your offerings now.
knowing that this is the work of the community and this is the work of faith. So we give and we ask God's blessing on all that we give, be it money, be it time, be it ourselves. Amen. We move into our offerings. Sorry, not our offerings, our notices and reminders. <laughs> Um, and please have a good look at the pew sheet because most of the things that are you need to know are there. Reminder that next Sunday we have do our last thing before we begin back into our narrative lectionary. Do we need to ask anything else? And we're thinking about Acts 10, 17 to 43. Uh, very aware that it's Father's Day next Sunday, but it's also communion. So we'll ask you to have your own communion things because I think we find we will be here online again next week. Now to help us, you would have read this in your notices or those of you who haven't read your notices yet, they're in there. We've got some questions for you. And Kelly and I are asking that you'd consider these questions and then give me some replies by Friday. Now you don't, we won't name anybody who's given any replies but this will be part of how we reflect back next Sunday morning. So the questions we want to ask is what would help you embody and embrace the challenge of Acts 10? And when I say Acts 10 I'm meaning that thing that says what God has made how can you call profane? So that's what I'm asking about. So what would help you embody and embrace the challenge of Acts 10? And where are you going to struggle with this challenge? Because we are. We all are going to struggle at some point. And then what are the opportunities within our community to make these changes that will allow us to embody Acts 10? So that's actually putting where do we go from now? Let's, let's think about what some of those steps could be. So we're going to explore that. We need your answers by Friday because as, as good as Kel and I are, that's the sort of thing we just can't riff without a little bit of prep. <laughs> so we do need that. So please have a think. Um, you can email, you can text. If you need to phone, phone. That's perfectly okay. Um, but it would be really great to hear some of your input into those reflections. Just a reminder about our care fund. Um, and how you can give to that. Our Bible study, I, um, we didn't Bible study on, on Thursday because I wasn't ready for it, but we're going to start again this coming Thursday and, of course, it will be online only at the moment. I'll send out the link a little bit closer to date, but the expectation is we're going to do something about this season of creation which we are moving into and um, some of that listening and listening to where the hurts may be and what can we, what do we need from a creation point of view. So that's the plan at this moment. Also a reminder that church council is on Wednesday and elders are on Friday. Church council is at seven, elders is at 5.30 and I will send you out links because we will need to meet online as we do that. Now, this is the time where we call for um, prayers and joys and concerns so I'm hoping Kel will have a little watch um, and let me just run through again as we've done in the last few weeks remembering that in all of this time as we speak God is with us and that excuse me that's part of our prayers so the things that we particularly remember um, and pray for all our um, August and then September people as we move into them uh, we pray for, continue to pray for Marg Reed, for Heather Welsh and her family, for Marg Hicks, for the Alfreds, for Zach. Zach's uh, operation on Monday didn't quite go as they had planned and he's still recovering from that. So a little bit slower there than he had hoped. Um, and for Joe and family. And probably for all of those people who sit in our hearts that we just remember their names and we pray for them. Presbytery, we've been asked to pray for Sandringham Uniting Church and for Andrea Mays, who is the supply minister there and their leadership team. 
and for Seaford Uniting Church and David Heim, who is the uh, pastor in that space as well, and their leadership time. And so we pray for those, those groups of people within our presbytery. The Assembly has asked us to pray for those doing urgent work to provide safety and protection for the refugees from, Af refugees from Afghanistan and all that Afghanistan is showing us in the news um, and how our hearts bleed for that. The members of the Assembly Standing Committee were meeting this weekend for the first time since their election at the um, Assembly meeting. And for those who have served and continue to serve on our church councils, for those who are mentoring, equipping and making space for the next generations, we pray and we give thanks for. So I'm wondering, Kel, have we got other prayers or thoughts, joys, concerns to share? Um, we have a joy that's come in. And as I said the other week, they're my favourite. There is a new baby. I'm so excited. So Rory Nichols, so Glennis Ramsey's son, um, and his partner Nat have welcomed their new baby, Hayden Thomas Nichols, into the big wide world. So I'm really excited. So, so many congratulations. Um, and congratulations on being a grandparent and it's going to be really good so that's the only one we have there so we can put all our joy into that space um but as always if you think of them later on type them in because we pray throughout the week so we Absolutely. then will be able to find them and pray together so any more throw them in but that's a really exciting one glennis thank you for sharing absolutely new babies are wonderful things in fact bruce and i found out this week that um our niece is expecting um, their first baby. So that will be fun when that little one arrives, uh, which is great. All right. As we come into a time of prayer, knowing that God has sat and listened to everything else that we've done, let us pray prayers of adoration, a call for confession, and we've done our others. So let us pray. We give you thanks, amazing God for mercy that reaches out, for patience that waits our return, for love that is always ready to welcome us and bring us home. You are faithful and you are kind. And today we join together with each other to declare your praise and to worship you and you alone. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And our call to confession, because I'm going to ask you to confess with me. But first, our call. One of the things that I love about the prayer of confession is it allows us to claim that we are works in progress and that there is beauty in that. We don't have to be perfect here. We don't have to have it all figured out here. We don't have to have a five-step plan for what's next in here. We just have to show up with our messy, beautiful selves and be honest. And so, friends, let us be honest and let us pray the prayer of confession together. Holy God, we are naturals when it comes to stalling out. We reach a certain point in the relationship, in the conversation, in our faith, and then we stall. We buy property on the top of the plateau and build a house there, destined to never dig deeper or climb higher. Forgive us for giving up on the things that matter. Forgive us for confusing the plateau with the mountaintop. Forgive us for taking the easy way out. Instead of doing the hard work of curiosity, relationship building, vulnerability and connection. Inspire us to see new paths for where we can go from here. With hope and honesty, we pray. Amen. Family of faith, we are works in progress. But we are works in progress designed, created and claimed by God. No matter what we have done or left undone this week, Today is a fresh start. To hear and believe the good news of the gospel. 
God is with me on the mountaintop and God is with me on the plateau. I am loved, claimed and forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. So as we've done in the past, let's say our affirmation of faith. Say with me, please. We believe that God is a conversationalist, drawing close to us and asking, what do you need? Where does it hurt? Who do you long to be? We see this conversational God in Jesus Christ, God's own flesh, who walked the earth speaking with the poor, the hungry, the lonely and the outcast. Therefore, we believe that our call as people of faith is to continue this holy conversation with those who look and think like us, as well as with those who share little in common with us. We believe that through these conversations, we are able to catch a glimpse of the kingdom of God. So we continue the conversation in hope. Amen. Let's sing together the Pilgrim Song. which we've shared each week. Family of faith, as you leave this place, may God grant you the curiosity to counter assumptions, the vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak your truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resilience to choose love even when it's hard, and the awareness of the Holy Spirit always beside you. In the name of the great connector, love itself, go in peace. Just
So that's the end of our worship uh, this morning. Please go and grab yourselves a cuppa and a biscuit if you want to join us online for morning tea. That will open up really um, very, very soon. And in the meantime, here's a song to play out. So we'll see you a little bit later.